So I've been trying to find a spot to put this camera where you guys can see me and him at the same time. I'm hoping he stays in the general vicinity. Um, <laughs> so everybody has asked how we acquired Rocco, where he came from, what his arrival story is, and it's actually really, really cool. There's a sad part to it though too. Um, Dave and I used to have a Swainson Toucan who was a female and uh, she died when she was about six years old. And when we lost her, the outpouring of love and support that we got from our fans was crazy. It was an intense amount. And a while later, we were, um, we were still on tour. We had lost her on tour and we were on a two year tour. And during, I think mostly towards the end of that tour, our fans got together and they actually purchased Rocco for us as a gift. And it was, it was crazy. <laughs> um, not only are toucans incredibly expensive, but just for them to do something like that was, was insane. We were just incredibly grateful. So Rocco was a gift. He came as a baby. Um, both of us didn't know if we were emotionally ready for another toucan and, um, or just even another bird in general after losing Fiji. Uh, but when you saw him <laughs> as a baby toucan who squeaked, um, we used to laugh. He would go, hmm, hmm. Um, you just couldn't help but fall in love with him and he just completely stole our heart. All right, Rocco moved. Oh, I cut him off. There he is. Okay. Rocco moved, so. Oh. Really? <laughs> Finds a way to be out of the frame. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Well, anyways, we raised Rocco um, while he was a baby in an RV because we were still on tour. And uh, it worked out because he was so little that it worked out at the time. But once he got bigger, he definitely requires a ton of space. So having a toucan is incredibly difficult because, I mean, I know a lot of people say like parrots need a lot of space, but toucans, it's not even an option to not have a lot of space. Like they require a lot of space. I think for a parrot, you can sometimes get away with a smaller cage and just let them out more. But with a toucan, like their enclosure needs to be gigantic and they need to be out. <laughs> so it's just, um, it's just crazy. Um, along with that, their dietary needs are so intense that if you don't do it properly, they'll live a very, very short term life and, and die from iron storage disease. So you have to be so incredibly careful of the fruits you give, of the pellet you give. Um, Missouri, their low iron pellets are the lowest parts per million out there on the market. And there's just a lot of misguided information on toucans online because um, it's really hard to research them and understand how to take care of them. They honestly, they just don't belong in human care. If I'm totally honest, I won't ever get another toucan after Rocco um, because they are so incredibly difficult to care for and, and it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, and it's hard to do right. It's really expensive. You constantly are buying the fresh food, your fruit, your, um, you're constantly wasting fruit because they change their mind and decide they don't like kiwi that day. Um, you know, we had to, we've had to buy at least two water purifiers, uh, constantly making sure that we have that type of water, whether we're traveling or somebody else is taking care of him. You can't just hook up a hose and do hose water, which would be so easy. They could go through a ton of water because you have to give it in a very large dish because of how their beaks are. They need a very large, um, somewhat shallow dish so they can actually scoop the water up and drink it. They can't just drink from like a parrot dish that you would give to a parrot. Um, not only do they drink it, but they bathe in it, and so they completely splash it out. So as soon as you give them fresh water, <laughs> they've made a mess of it and it's gone. You have to be really careful about not giving them cement type perches because their nails file down incredibly quickly. Unlike a parrot's where you want to file their nails down because they get really sharp, a toucan's get sharp as well, but they file down because they're much softer. Um, and so they will actually bleed if they are on that type of perching too much. So in here, we have metal perches, which he's on right now, and then otherwise we just have wood and rope. So if he is on cement too long, he will, they'll file down so quickly he'll bleed. They're also so messy. So you have to remember because they are getting so much fruit in their diet, their poops are pretty much like paint. So it's like paint splatter when it comes out. Um, it's also the color of whatever fruit they eat. So for example, if your toucan eats a bunch of blueberries, it's gonna be like 
a dark purple splatter. Um, and it stains stuff. We've had it, we've had him freak out inside the house and fly and poop at the same time and it just splatters the entire wall. And it's so hard to wipe that off and actually not have it stain the walls. We actually repainted our house because when we first moved in, we had white walls and Rocco had a few freak outs and they weren't coming off the walls. So we painted um, and now I'm really particular about when I let him out, just making sure that there aren't likely to be things to scare him, but I've still had it happen and had him splatter all over the piano and all sorts of stuff. So it's not pretty, it's not easy to clean up after them. Uh, it's incredibly messy. <laughs> So if you have any kind of nectar or fruit eating animals, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you should visit an aviary that does so you can get an idea. But it's incredibly messy and gross. Um, they also tend to fling their food. So when he eats something, he grabs it in his beak. He'll often squish it, squish down, and then he'll, sometimes he'll shake and send it like send it off or sometimes he'll shake and squeeze and just send the juice flying um, and then toss it back and eat it but they're just incredibly messy birds I've seen people put plastic up around um, the walls and the the floors of their toucans indoor enclosures because of this because it can get so gross the bars of his aviaries are often very sticky from fruit um, it's just it's just a pleasure to clean up after. Um, but yeah, like I said, if, you know, when we lose Rocco, I would definitely not ever get another toucan again. Um, they're just, they're incredibly fragile. It's incredibly difficult. And it's just kind of obvious that since humans, as humans, we don't know enough about how to properly care for them that I wouldn't take that responsibility on again I'm incredibly grateful for him and I love him to pieces of course and I'm so happy that we have such a supportive fan base that was willing to get this kind of animal for us but I would definitely not do it again and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody else to do either I'm sure that there's cute videos out there that makes them look really appealing but <laughs> it's not it's not an ideal pet for sure oh my gosh you guys there's a little baby robin right there by the tree. It's right there. And the mom just checked on it because it actually got stuck in this catch-all somehow. I'm thinking since it was little, like, I don't know, maybe it fit through there. I'm not sure, don't see a little nest. But I guess maybe it could have fit through there because it was it's little. But Rocco was like, what are you doing? And I opened the door and it came out. So thankfully it got out, but oh my gosh, you guys, it's so cute. I don't wanna like freak it out, but I'm just gonna try to get close enough to get a little thing. Oh, it's so cute. It's right there. As soon as I let it out, the mom came over and checked on it and flew over there with it. Just a little baby. And it was flying in the catch-all, so hopefully I see it fly. Don't know where mom went. Hey, little guy. Oh, good. Yay. Look at that. Oh, there's the mom. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Woohoo! Crazy. I'm sure Rocco didn't appreciate it much, though. Then a little love for you. And a little love for you. A little love. You have fresh water. Nice clean aviary. Oh, got fresh fruit. Got hugs. Mm -hmm. Love you. So I've been asked how Rocco takes a shower or a bath. He hates it if we give him one. He can do it himself. So he uses his big water dish to give himself a bath. He won't normally do it when I'm here though. 
but I do have some videos on my channel of him taking baths and bowls. So he does do it. Okay. Oh yeah, jumpy on. Go go go. What? What else did you guys ask? Um. <laughs> thank you, Rocco. As far as his care and stuff, you wanna go? You wanna stay? Okay, you wanna stay. He gets seventy percent fresh fruit that is non-citrus. So I'm gonna try to set this down. Um. So I have like a feeding guide. It's actually for Araceres on my website. You know, I appreciate you being gentle, but. Um, <clears throat> and so he can have pretty much any fruit that is non-citrus. And mainly he has papaya, but I change it up as much as possible. But I always try to buy a papaya when I'm at the store so that I can give it to him. Um, but yeah, he loves kiwi, but it changes. He loves blueberries, so we use blueberries as treats for training. As far as tricks, people are asking about tricks. We put his natural behaviors on cue so he can do like a vertical flight from the floor. We put that on cue and some hopping, but he's gonna eat his breakfast. But as far as now, since he's getting his blueberries just for free, <laughs> He doesn't necessarily have to do any of those tricks to get them, but they are just stuff that he does naturally that we wanted to show because toucans are awesome. They rock. And then yeah, diet wise, he gets a low iron pellet from Missouri. It's one of the lowest parts per million pellet out there on the market. It looks like this. Um, so he has that all the time. He has, toucans have incredibly fast metabolisms, so they'll feel hungry really quick. So we try to make sure that he always has access to at least a pellet. Compared to our other birds, people are usually terrified to hold Rocco. They usually say he looks fake and they don't understand how to hold him. He's very skittish, like toucans are pretty naturally skittish. Um, and they're very twitchy and the way that they move is different than a, than a parrot. So people are really freaked out by it because it can come across as sudden. Um, but it's just like, that's just how they move. <laughs> It's just their own mannerisms. Huh. Huh. People think you're kind of scary. They think you're kind of scary. They do. They think you move kind of sudden and stuff and that you're twitchy. Are you twitchy? Are you twitchy? So yeah, people usually are intimidated by him because of the beak. They don't usually want to touch him or anything. Maybe if he was asleep they would. <laughs> but. Usually people are really willing to feed him. They like throwing him berries, but as far as physical interaction, people are usually too nervous to do that with him. And honestly, he probably wouldn't want it from anybody anyway. Huh. Oh, you're crazy can. But yeah, I've had people who um, have tons of experience with parrots be really incredibly intimidated by him just because he moves so much differently. But once you get to know a toucan's mannerisms, you kind of calm down about it and realize they're just, they're just twitchy cans. Twitchy. 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 And he's gentle. He's super gentle with grabbing me. He'll usually, um, like tap me on the head or like start to pull on my hair or start to grab my shirt if I'm working in here cleaning the aviary or something and he's like, uh, pets first, he'll just like come over and tap me or grab something. It's pretty cute. And I'll usually think it's like a bug or something. So I'll be like, whoa, and then feel a beak connected. And then he'll usually hold my finger and bring it close so that he can get some love. His tail has like one tail feather. I know, I'm just saying, it's cute. It's just kind of embarrassing. He has one tail feather. <laughs> He's just terrible about breaking his tail, which is why you guys don't see a lot of free flight videos of him because he can't balance very well with that long beak and then like no tail. So he's not very reliable flyer when that happens. And he's managed to do it every single year. Love you. I love you, I love you. Love you. It's 
far as uh, training ability and intelligence, these guys are definitely trainable. Um, the difference is they're incredibly fast metabolism. So they have um, really, really fast metabolisms. They tend to feel hungry very quickly. So we've always made sure that Rocco has pellets at all times and then we bring the fresh fruit accordingly. And he prefers the fruit, so he'll eat the fruit first, but um, just so he never feels hungry because they can go from hungry to starved very, very quickly. We worked with some wild toucans in the Bahamas and we were able to train them in one to two days to go into a crate in case of an emergency or evacuation on the islands and we were able to train them within a couple days to take food from anybody so anybody could go into the enclosure toss fruit to them or feed them by hand and they would take it willingly and they were really really cool about it um, and this was a pair of breeding toucans so it was a bunch of pairs and that we worked with for a few days and they all did really really great they're incredibly intelligent um, they're incredibly trainable but they have a few characteristics that make them harder to train I would say compared to parrots so some parrot species are known for being phobic like an African gray or um, or whatever but these guys, these guys are phobic. <laughs> like after working with toucans, African Grey's got nothing on them. Um, toucans are incredibly skittish. So they scare really, really easily and they spook really, really easily. So it doesn't make them very ideal for training quite a few behaviors. Um, they are very, very loving though. They can be so, so amazing and affectionate, but um, Gosh, and they're just adorable. They're amazing animals and amazing creatures. I just don't think that they're ideal pets for anybody, to be honest. So it's, you know, it's taken us a really long time to even get this aviary. And I finally feel like, oh, now that I have this aviary, I don't know how we were pulling it off with six foot diameters and five by eight. So I'm just like, wow, that was never enough. And I'm sure if I had something bigger than this, I would say the same thing. I would be like, oh my gosh, you know, that was never adequate enough. Um, so I think that's something I will always personally feel like I'm never doing well enough until I have a total island to my bird's selves. They're amazing creatures. I just, oh, I personally don't recommend them. I would be surprised to hear anybody recommend a toucan as a pet. Yeah. Well, I hope this answered all your guys' questions about Rocco, our toucan, how we got him, how he, well, no longer performs with us, but used to, and just how to care for a toucan. The other thing about toucans as pets is you're not gonna find a vet that specialized in taking care of toucans. He finds a way out of the frame. So yeah, if you guys have any more questions about toucans, and if I know the answer, I will answer. Just leave a comment and I will do my best to answer your question or point you in the direction of somebody who can. Honestly, the guru on toucans and the one responsible for bringing them into the US is Jerry Jennings of Emerald Forest Birds and he's in California. So if you have specific or very important questions, I would say direct them to him. Um, he is pretty much where all the toucans stem from in the U.S. and he's the one that uh, I got almost all of my information 
from because he's the only one that seems to know what and is doing it right because he's kept toucans for a very long time. So uh, yeah, and he is one of the only few that knows how to properly breed them and keep them in captivity. So I've also visited his aviary and everything. So very, very cool. Um, great information over there. He keeps it up to date and that's kind of where where I go if I have any sort of questions or um, concerns about Rocco, he's the first place that I go and I ask. So that's what I would recommend. Blue feet. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was trying to show everyone your blue feet. I was trying to show everyone your blue feet. I was trying to show them. There's a blue feet.